God bless you all, and I want to thank you all for your love and support. I have a very important message for you. We prepared this speech without regard for the outcome of this race. Given the actions of the corrupt Wisconsin GOP, the corrupt and complicit local, national, and international media, I strongly believe it's appropriate to give the world my assessment of the lay of the land. And frankly, as in 2016 when we successfully derailed Paul Ryan's Trans-Pacific Partnership, ultimately cheering President Trump's signature, sending it to the ash bin of history, it is what we learned during this race that I'd like to share with you now. We find ourselves facing an enemy unlike anything before in American history. At no other point has the fate of America been in the hands of a hostile alien deluge who have no connection to our people or our land. At no other point have we as a nation and a people placed the false values of tolerance and so-called diversity before the safety of our own children. Before us lies two paths, and two paths alone. We choose either our demographic extinction and relinquishment of our homeland, or we choose the dawn of a magnificent era. Those of us engaged in taking on the current political and cultural power structure find ourselves facing down an enemy that is incredibly organized, highly tribal, and extremely well-funded. We are up against a dishonest press that unmistakably despises real Americans. We are in a race against time with immigration schemes that have wrought our demographic replacement. Within my own lifetime, America went from a nation where whites comprised 90% of the nation to around 60% and falling fast. We face a hostile political elite who has not represented the desires of real Americans for at least 70 years. The political hegemony is filled with liars, perverts, deviants, and criminal lunatics who on many occasions have declared total war on our people. These are not the trappings of a serious nation. The news reports of a serious nation would not endlessly cover the stories of criminal alien invaders being deported to their rightful homelands when our own citizens are being killed daily due to porous borders. No serious nation would ensure the native population was burdened with heavy taxes in order to pay for the security of nations on the other side of the globe and to feed people who have nothing but hatred towards us. No serious nation would allow their own people to be politically disenfranchised by alien interlopers, to be raped and killed by the wretched refuse that destroy our neighborhoods. No serious nation would allow in a million or more welfare tourists each year, taxing hardworking American families to fund their own replacement and justified by illegitimate immigration laws. These are the trappings of an occupation government not those of a serious nation. The hostile political elite in this nation, both within the DNC and the GOP, display nothing but outright disdain for this nation, her ideals, and the ancestors of those who built everything you see today. I'm here to send them a cl very clear message. The nationalists are coming. The dark cloud that looms upon our borders, shores, and over our cities will not define who we are any longer. Our destiny as a nation and as a people will no longer be intertwined with that of your third world scourge, your vile refuse, your child raping media elites, your lying press, your merchant bankers, and your Janus faced politicians. This does not mark the end of one man's political campaign. This marks merely the beginning of what will be the most revolutionary movement our nation has ever seen. The predatory migration scheme that has been weaponized against our people will be decimated. Our borders will be secured. We will hold every single alien invader and every last member of the international clique that has orchestrated these crimes against us accountable. They will no longer continue to abuse us with impunity. Their maniacal spree of criminal madness will be stopped cold in its tracks. We are no longer going to be reduced to tax serfs in our homeland. We will no longer be second-class citizens waiting in line behind alien masses who denigrate us in their foreign languages. We will no longer be putting the interest of anybody or any nation before our own homeland and our own people. We are letting them all know that we will not tolerate them and their hostile pogroms any longer. What this hostile elite and their pet alien hordes fear the most, the reason they publish incessant hit pieces, the reason they seek to silence our voices is because they fear that we are more than a political movement. They fear that we may be their comeuppance. And they, of course, they are right. The vile policies and weaponized hordes used against our people are crimes that will not go unpunished. We are told incessantly by the liberal elite that we as a people have no culture, that we have no right to our own homelands, that we have no right to decide our own future, that we are told we must 
sit idly by as our culture, our monuments, our cities are all destroyed by an alien mass. We are told that we must sacrifice more so that we can fund the welfare of the wretched hordes who come here and lecture us about our privilege and that we must be more tolerant. We have been the most tolerant and welcoming people in the history of mankind. No other people have welcomed outsiders into their lands, closed them, fed them, housed them, educated them, only to be hated and despised by them. This is our homeland, not some global soup kitchen for the global indigent. Although the situation looks desperate and times are grim, we must never forget that the very reason Europe and America exist today is because of small bands of men coming together in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds, facing down almost certain defeat on the darkest of hours, furiously proclaim that they will not be going quietly into the ash heap of history. No matter what happens, they will make their ancestors, their families, their nation, and their descendants proud. Here we stand again today, facing down what looks to be soul-crushing odds, with everything stacked against us. As our ancestors did before, we shall follow suit. We will throw back the alien hordes. We will escape the hackles of a hostile elite. We will take back every city. We will rebuild every monument. We will revitalize the spirit of our people. We will give the dreams back to the Americans who have had their shattered by such bitter policies. And for all those people who have conspired towards the destruction of America and her people, they will suffer the consequences. The age of liberal tolerance and apathy is over. There is a magnificent new dawn on the horizon. We will suffer through the long night and emerge anew again. The days of capitulating to the press, to hostile nations, to foreign invaders, it is all over. It ends now. The age of guilt is over. We will not apologize for being better. We are not sorry that our ancestors explored more, invented more, discovered more, and were superior to theirs. We will not be lectured and derided any longer by those who create nothing, who build nothing, who do nothing, who are nothing, and who worship nothing but material wealth. Americans are waking up faster than ever. The nationalist sentiment rises from here to the far corners of Europe. Those who have made it clear they prefer our demise, those who have declared their war upon our people, and those complicit have all played their hand. We've seen them without the mask, and I want them to all know that we are coming for them. We are coming to take back our homeland. We will ensure the safety of every man, woman, and child in our nation. We will take back everything that has been stolen from us. We will take back everything that is rightfully ours. Those who have stood against us, and those who refuse to take a stand at all will learn the gravity of their decisions in due time. Those who have chosen to stand valiantly against the rising flood of alien invaders and hostile interlopers will go down in history as perhaps the greatest generation of Americans to ever live. The stakes have never been higher as they are today. We will do whatever is necessary to pull back our nation from its death throes. There is no moral justification required for the survival as a people and a nation. We will take this fight to the absolute limit. We will go further than any nation ever has gone before in order to win this war. These are, without any doubt, the times that try men's souls. With everything that we have ever held dear now on the line, there is no time more perfect than this to declare that for our nation and for our people, there will be no compromise. There will be no surrender. There will be no despair. There will only be tomorrow a brilliant new day for our people. If there was ever any struggle of a higher nobility, I have yet to find it. For our people will always be the single most important thing that our nation has. Everything else can be replaced. We can rebuild, but our people, the men and women of our own stock, those with the blood of our ancestors in their veins, can never and will never be replaced. Thank you, and God bless you all.